So we have different kinds of students, right? Uh, we have introverted students, extroverted students, and any, anything in between. Uh, so I personally, I, I think I was a bit of an introvert. Uh, I found it difficult to talk with anybody and everybody. Uh, so my feeling was that if a professor back in, let's say, 2004, 2005 would have uh, suddenly declared on the first day of class that from today onwards, we are going to do active learning in this course, I would have been a little bit scared to put it mildly. Uh, the, very, the very fact that, uh, that I had left home for the first time in my life, left the predictive environments of my school, uh, and here I was all alone in a new institute, living in a hostel with my mates. Uh, everything was new. The only last last semblance of familiarity was in the was in the lecture room where the teacher would come and very authoritatively teach me. If that also fell away, now I would be in shatters. That was my feeling. So I, I told you that would it be perhaps better if, for the sake of the introverted students, uh, selfishly speaking. Uh, that we perhaps introduce active learning a little bit later. So, so could you please recount for the sake of, I'm sure there will be other introverted students who will be listening to this for their benefit, what you told me. Sure. Well, the short answer to your question is no, would not be better to delay. The most important thing to me as a teacher is not making all my students happy. The most important thing to me as a teacher is learning. I want my students to learn the material I'm teaching them. It's very important to me that they learn. And if I have a technique which is going to promote learning, help them learn better, better prepare them for the examinations that I'm going to be giving them, then I want to take full advantage of that technique. And then I'll just bounce back to my previous answer. It does um, worry you. If you're an introvert, you're initially probably going to resist uh, active learning to some extent. But the research on active learning that I quoted before was looking at the students as a body, introverts and extroverts alike. And what it found is that the resistance of both the introverts and the extroverts, the initial resistance of the introverts may be a little bit greater, but it's going to go away fairly quickly if you're doing active learning correctly, and the students are going to learn more. The other thing is you're, I suspect, exaggerating how bad you would feel as an introvert in finding yourselves being put into this where it would really be scary is if I'm making you get up and talk in front of the entire class. As a, even introverts are not all that uncomfortable talking to one or at most two other people in a small group for two minutes. Right? That's not going to terrify you, no matter how strong an introvert you are. And I can tell you, you know, I may not be acting like an introvert now, but trust me, I am one. And I'm a very strong introvert in real life. The reason I may not seem like one now is because I'm a teacher. And what I found is that to be an effective teacher, I can't just be like that. I've got to get out there in front of the students, be connecting with them, transmitting information to them, listening to them if they have questions. And so even though I am an introvert in real life, I have to at least pretend to be an extrovert to be effective as a teacher. But if you're a student and a strong introvert, it's not gonna be as terrifying as you're afraid of to find yourself being asked to do active learning. The other thing I'll briefly tell you about is I did a research study, I don't know, 20 years ago or so, in which I followed a class, a chemical engineering class, through the curriculum, teaching them one core course, one required course, a semester for five consecutive semesters, using all of the techniques that uh, I, or most of the techniques I talk about in the book, including active learning. And I surveyed those students. The object of the research study was to find out what will happen if you use these techniques repeatedly. 
Usually a student might see active learning in one class and then never see it again. My question was, what will happen if they keep seeing it? Would the benefits of this technique shown by the research be even greater if it's reinforced? And uh, I did that and I published quite a few papers on it. But one of the interesting things is I surveyed the students in every semester, asking them, how do you feel about these little activities that we're doing in class? Do you think they're helping your learning? Do you think they're hindering your learning? Or eh, it doesn't make much difference. I can take them or leave them. And what I found is that in that first semester that I taught, and I asked the students this question, right at the very beginning in the first week of the course, I got a pretty good distribution, but the introverts, because I also had a way of determining who was introvert and who was extrovert, the introverts were more resistant. More of them didn't like these small groups than the extroverts who thought, oh, this is great. I love talking to people and this gives me a chance to do it. But what I found was that later in the semester, six weeks into the semester, I asked the same question and the resistance from everybody dropped considerably. And by the end of the sequence of courses, after they've been doing this for a couple of years, the introverts actually preferred the group activities to just lecturing to a greater extent than the extroverts did. And my theory about that is that the introverts realized that if they had been left given the choice, many of them would have said, no, I don't want to do that. I want to work by myself and so forth. But after they had done it for three semesters or so, realized that they were learning in these activities in a way that they had never before learned. And so they expressed an even stronger preference for active learning than the extroverts did. That both groups really liked it, but the introverts even more than the extroverts. So uh, thank you for pointing that out in, in such a nice, elaborate way. Uh, so regarding what I felt during my first year and what happened later on, I'll just uh, say it for the benefit of the students who may be in a similar position as mine. Uh, so in my first year, I was an introvert. I stayed that way. And I saw all around me students who would bunch up in groups, study together. So although there was no active learning that was being actually done during, during the classes, but since we are in a, in a, in a residential campus, uh, many of the students actually chose some sort of active learning in their own way. And yeah. even though I stayed with my books much longer than they did, they did better than me. So, mm. so I'm a professor of mechanical engineering now, uh, and people think that I have been an, like an over-the-top excellent student all, all the while. It's not true. Okay, I didn't do as well I, as I should have, considered the, considering the fact that I was with my books all the time. I didn't do as well as I should have in my first year. But in my second year, uh, I, I just took a cue from some of my friends and maybe opened up just a little bit. And I, and I was very privileged to have a very good set of friends in my department. So when I, when I roamed around uh, with them, studied with them just a little bit more than my first year, my academic performance simply increased like, like, like a huge, it took a huge step forward. So, so there was not much difference in the teaching style, so to speak, from first year to second year, but it was a change in my attitude of me just trying to consciously trying to open up a little bit that really helped me out a lot. So mm -hmm. I think if we can do it from our own, uh, uh, own initiative as students, if the professor's input is there in terms of the active uh, learning and, this, and the learning center teaching, it could be a huge, huge boost to uh, the whole spectrum of students. So I, I really yeah. believe that from an, from an anecdotal perspective also. <laughs>